Okay, landscape video today. Uh, Going to be a little bit long. Um, so someone in the comments, uh, CA, uh, asked for a little bit more details on the machine because I think um, they are considering getting one. And he mentioned uh, size and weight constraints for operating it in an apartment. And uh, I don't know if that's uh, that's up to you. You do you. But um, there's a reason I'm sharing this space rather than have it in my apartment um so talking about the other upgrades that i done so the, the big the big upgrade is this table the table and the rigidity increase has been tremendous uh that's probably the biggest thing that needs to be done on these things um i mentioned that i'm using a, a fog buster um misting coolant system you don't need that the machine actually comes with uh, the flood coolant the lines and a pump um, but let's get over so it's not just upgrades it's just other stuff that you need you need a good table so the table I got it's steel it's from Uline they're a big um, North American industrial supply it's about $400 it's not uh, not cheap and it's about just over two feet by, I can't hook this filming one-handed, but if you take my word for it, it's just over uh, three feet. Um, my machine's not exactly centered left to right, but it will overhang the width of the, um, the table just a bit, even if it is perfectly centered. So the table added $400. Um, the fog buster was also quite expensive, but like I said, it's not necessary, and there are less expensive uh, eBay and AliExpress missing systems. I'm, I'm going to be testing them, but I've heard these are more reliable, but they're, I think this was about $400. It was also very, very expensive. So that pump, it came with the machine. There's two of them. This one is running the, um, and I'm running automotive antifreeze, and it's the cooling for uh, the spindle coolant. I just bought these two big kind of locking uh, bins from uh, Walmart, and just drilled some holes in the top for the, uh, to run the fittings through. And it's not evaporating, there's no, nothing growing in it, I think, because of the antifreeze. Um, not an upgrade uh, per se. If you get your right po your power correct, and you'll see, I was blowing fuses and all that, and I didn't realize there's a difference between the 220 power that we use in North America versus the 220 in uh, China. And I think Europe and UK and China uses the same 220, so you might be okay. But you're going to want to double check that. So. That's basically the space that you need, but but it's an extremely loud machine, and um, and with the flood coolant, it's going to be messy. Um, running the misting with the um, the isopropanol, it's not messy, but you need ventilation because otherwise, like your place will fill up with slightly flammable rubbing alcohol and it smells and probably not good for your health to breathe that in all day so we have that door opens that door opens um flood coolant however will splash everywhere um what you could do is use uh, a good table and use that as an enclosure base because the machine doesn't extend past the table uh, aside, like like when it moves. Aside from that, so like you maybe have to put like some some little standoffs, but then you could build um, an enclosure around it for mess and also noise, because like I said, it's loud. There's the other spindle I talked about. It's also 2.2 kilowatts. I uh, haven't put it on yet. I haven't really had the need to. I don't know if it's going to be strictly necessary. My the stuff I'm doing is geared towards mostly small things. Um, 
If you do run a miscoolant, though, you will need a, an air compressor. Um, this is the one in my buddy's shop, but this is my own. And these, if you're running an apartment, you'd probably have to get something like this. Uh, these are very quiet. They're about as loud as, like, your fridge, the fridge compressors. Uh, you can run these inside, no problem. This was about $200. Um, and then other stuff that you'll need. I had trouble with the probing system on this. I had, I, I had some couple pretty extreme failures of it going the wrong direction, and I just said, I'm not interested. So I bought a manual height setter. And so this, this is for setting my tool height with for Z. This is a fixed, um, it's, a, it's, a ground, it's a ground, precision ground block. And then you set a, a parallel across there and then zero the dial. And that's 50 millimeters. So then you bring your, your cutter and then so you zero that. And then you bring the cutter down until it uh, hits your zero. And then you set your, your Z at, uh, at 50 millimeters in the Mach 3 code. For the um, XY, I've got my digital scope in here that I'm having a very hard time finding center, to make sure it's concentric. Its adjustment is very finicky. So I ended up using a old school um, centering microscope came pre um, pre centered concentric with the crosshairs. This was about oh like three hundred dollars off of eBay. These are made in Korea. This I think was eighty dollars uh, off AliExpress. Uh, if you can get your probing sorted out, that's probably the way to go. It comes with a very cheap probe um, uh, sorry tool tool touch plate where it basically acts like like this where it just closes a um, electrical circuit and gives a signal to PLC the logic on mine for whatever reason it goes the wrong direction it wants to stab down into the um, into the uh, plate rather than go up um, it's probably a scripting issue um, fire extinguisher, acetone, because, um, I do some super glue fixturing. Um, my vice is just set on with, um, I think these are the Mighty Bite clamps. You want some clamping? These are local. These are the Tiger clamps from Carbide 3D, and then these are the um, the Mighty Bite, where it's an eccentric bolt head in a, in a brass hex nut. So you need your work holding, your clamping. You can buy. You can either make your own or buy uh, pre-done um, tooling plates that have all the holes in them. But uh, you could probably do it yourself. If you uh, once you have this, then it's flat and square to the machine. So basically, the machine was I can't remember now like 3400 Canadian plus 400 for the table. Um, transformer, if you do your power right, you won't have to buy that. It's about 400 dollars for the mister, but you can get them for like 20 bucks off eBay, different, different style. 80 for the Z set, 300 for the XY. This was another $400, uh, but like I said, I don't think, for me, it's not necessary. Um, for doing smaller pieces out of titanium, like the, um, the bottle opener uh, meant that uh, CA mentioned, the stock spindle will be fine for that. Um, and then you yeah, have about 200 bucks for the, uh, for the compressor. Um, the table itself, like I said, the material cost was about $200. And then I did this, um, drilling and counterboring the, the mounting holes myself. 
because I'm at my buddy's shop, so I have access to that. Having someone do this for you would probably be quite expensive. Um, so that's that's the big and if you had it done somewhere else and you had to get it from ship, shipping will be fairly expensive. It's, it's a fairly heavy plate of aluminum. This one's kind of optional. This is 100% mandatory to get these things to work. So that's that's the, the little rundown of how much space you need. So then you'll also, like, I'm borrowing space. I don't have a toolbox here, so most of this is uh, cutters and collets. I'm, I'm experimenting with assorted AliExpress uh, cutters and collets, and I found a couple good suppliers. So I'll make probably more specific videos about them in the future. There's three brands that I've been I've had nothing but good experience with. They're cutters, and then I found some very very good uh, high precision collets, which are important when you're running the extremely small um, cutters. You need you need a very high precision collet to keep the so the con concentricity is as perfect as possible. Otherwise, you end up snapping those things like nothing, and they're about. Five or six dollars each. Um, so you'll need an assortment of collets. You, uh, you won't need a full set, I don't think, for this. I think the biggest you'll need is a quarter inch, depending if, if you're going to be using any American tooling. I only use quarter inch for... Uh, this is a diamond drag. So it's a spring-loaded. So it's a diamond tip, and it's, uh, it's spring-loaded. Uh, it just has a quarter inch uh, shank, which is uh, 6.35 millimeters. Most of the tooling I get is metric for the car for the carbide cutters. Um, I'm usually doing six millimeter shanks and four millimeter shanks, and then uh, and then they neck they neck down to the actual cutter. These little micro things are about f focus. These little micro ones are about f like I said five or six dollars each. Um, it's good inexpensive um, cutters from. AliExpress, they just take a bit longer to get here than say Amazon. Uh, so that's about it. You need you need room. So if you, if you don't have this specific table, you need space to for the control box, which is about it's a little bit bigger than an old uh, than an old PC case. Let's see, take a measurement off of that. So it's about 18 by 18 by uh, eight and a half. So it's, and that's 25.4 uh, millimeters for every inch. If you're not familiar, I'm in Canada. We do metric and American units. Uh, that's about it. So the pricing, I've mentioned it all, I think. Um, yeah, so I hope that's useful. I, I would still, I'm going to say every time, I'm going to say I would still recommend one of the 4040s with a fixed gantry. Um, just from a rigidity point of view because of the problems I've been having with having to slow down my acceleration and jerk stuff on the servos so I don't break things because it's a little bit top, top heavy. Um, the other thing is the table has to be this big even though I'm not using most of it, right? It's just... Um, so this is going to come back, call it eight inches. So the, this comes back eight inches more. So you see roughly where I have, where I have this all behind there is basically unusable machining space. So your 30 by 40 is roughly in here. I didn't realize that at the time. I just put this roughly centered. If I was going to do this, I would move this more forward. Um, but aside from that, yeah, I think a 4040 might be still a better option for the, for the footprint. Like, so the footprint of this itself, I 
think it says on their on their website anyways. But this is about 26 and a half inches by with the gant the gantry roughly there. So by about 25 and a half. It's almost it's almost square if you count these sticking out. And then the height is almost the same. 25 and a half and then this will come up another another five inches. So this, this will be up to the five. Yeah, rambly video, shaky cam. Um, I gotta clean up and try to get some work done on this thing. So, hope this was useful. I don't think this is gonna be the next superstar video, but um, 60 minutes of rambling about one of these China CNC zone CNCs. That's basically just good enough to to do the titanium and stainless steel stuff that most people kind of imagine all CNCs can do. But this is, I think, the bare minimum is this machine with the table mod. All right, good afternoon. Later.